All right, so uh, I'm starting out. Uh, you'll see that uh, the way I've done 9.1, 9.2, 9.3 is in a very similar style. Uh, I give you a definition of the locus and then talk about their equations, okay? So right here is this uh, long-winded definition of what a hyperbola is. So get that down and then I will discuss it with you, okay? Then, all right, so let's take a look at the definition, okay? So what the definition is telling you is that if you pick a point on a hyperbola, let's say you pick a point here, okay? Then what it's saying is that the difference of the distance from this point P so this distance, let's call it D1, and this distance here, called D2, that's a constant. So that's what this uh, definition was saying. Okay? And this is F1, standing for the focus 1. This is F2, standing your focus 2. This here is your center. Can you guys see that C? Does that show up okay? Uh, this is C. Okay. Uh, these are your vertices here. That's V2. This is V1. Okay, so two vertices, two foci, one center. Okay, Mandy, what can you see about the center if you look at the picture there and hopefully you can see it? Uh, in this case it is, but it won't always be. What can you say in terms of its relationship to the vertices and to the foci? Just like it was in the ellipses, exactly the same relationship. Sorry? Equal distance from the vertex and from the focus. Can someone state it in another way, Henry? Exactly. It's the midpoint of the vertices and also the midpoint of the foci. Okay? Right. Uh, the red line that you see there is called the transverse axis. This line here. The line that connects the two vertices is called the transverse axis. Uh, what else do we need to know out of here? Uh, the distances, okay? So, the distance from the center to the vertex is A. So, this distance here is A. And the distance from the center to the focus is... Anybody? Distance from the focus to the center. Just like it was in ellipses. C. Thank you. So, this distance here is C. Okay? Okay, hopefully you can see all the stuff now. Okay? All right? So a lot of terms that are very similar to ellipses. The equation looks very similar, so please, yeah. So exactly. The distance between B1 and B2 is the same? It's 2A. Oh. Yeah. Just like it was in ellipses, right? The distance between the two vertices is 2A. It's called the, what's it called? The major axis. Okay, and A is called the? Semi-major because it's half, okay, semi-major because it's half the axis, okay. Is everybody all right on this? Sharik, you want to share some exciting news here? Um, you look very happy and pleased and, uh, huh? 63, is that it? Wow. Well, unfortunately, you got another four-year stint to do. <laughs> Sorry it's for your fun, but uh, that's reality. And maybe more. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, you guys got to look at it this way. It's a long haul, okay? And if you start counting your days, they get longer. Good. Nice. Nice. Yeah, you really have to. I don't know. I mean, my days at Cal, golly, they were so stressful. Uh, but was I counting the days? I guess I didn't know how to count, so <laughs> I really wasn't counting the days. But, I mean, school was hard. School was hard, no questions about it. Uh, was work harder? Yeah. 
work was hard. It, it wasn't, well, I mean, you know, she's saying that, hey, uh, thanks for being encouraging. Thanks for being uh, encouraging. I think it's better that you understand reality and think that work's going to be great 9 to 5 kind of thing. Okay? It's not going to be 9 to 5 kind of thing. Okay? Um, the other downside of work is it can become extremely monotonous. As school is not definitely monotonous. School, you've got a lot of different things going on. You've got friends, you've got awesome, you've got beta, you've got Sadie's, you've got hoodies, and, you know, all kinds of stuff going on that's exciting, okay? Work, man, it's like a nine-to-five drag, basically. Uh, okay, that was my story about this. How about my equations? Oh, inbox activity we start out with. Oh, I wonder why. So what does that mean? Hello, what does that mean? Anybody awake? Well, <laughs> you need to take your boxes out, duh. So what do we need to do before we put it into the graphing calculator? Sorry? Isolate the Y. Uh, can I pause here and get someone to come up to the board and do it? Yeah, someone want to go up? Shall I pause for a minute here? Yeah, uh, let me just go back and show you the equations that I had, okay? Yeah. So you go to VARES, so make sure you have negative sign first, okay? So negative sign, go to VARES, function, Y1. That way you don't have to type in, uh, you know, the whole thing all over again. Uh, where's VARES? Right in the same line as the math key. It's the same row as in the math key. Okay, so everybody get this graph here, okay? Now, hopefully you're going to see that um, what you get in this graph here, hello, got your application done? Got your app done? Okay, hopefully you see that you are getting what I call asymptotes. What? Oh, I know why. Uh -huh, yes, I know. You waiting for me? Awesome. What the? I am taking my. I'm trying to figure out how to snip the uh, freaking calculator. Should be able to do that. I should be able to snip anything I want. There we go. Okay, so what I'm trying to tell you is that for the first time, the conics that we are studying, well, you should have seen this before, uh, last year, but you should start to recognize these. What are those? Fantastic, good job, awesome. You're back on track, I think. Good job. Uh, okay, so those are your asymptotes. We're going to see those asymptotes more in detail tomorrow.